we're going to use this PowerPoint to learn about ionic bonds. And you should have learned through your readings that there are two different factors that affect um, how molecules will interact. One is the molecular motion, and the second one is um, the arrangement of the electrons um, around the atom, specifically in the outermost shell. And we already learned how to make the shells, so now we're going to look at some shells and talk about specifically atoms that will form ionic bonds. Okay, so to figure out if an atom is going to undergo a reaction or not, you always want to look at the outermost shell. Um, atoms with incomplete outer shells are most likely to undergo a reaction. So here's oxygen, here's nitrogen, um, that second shell, and both atoms will hold a, would hold a total possible of eight electrons. Oxygen only has six in the second shell, and nitrogen only has three. Um, sorry, five, so it has room for three. What these atoms want to do is they want to fill their outer shell. That's how they're going to be more stable. So sometimes they'll share electrons or they'll um, gain or lose electrons. Um, and this is the basis of chemical reactions. An ionic bond is a type of bond that's formed when atoms either gain electrons or lose electrons to fill that outermost shell. Um, when an atom gains an electron or it loses an electron, it changes, and it becomes something known as an ion. And the main characteristic of an ion is that the number of protons and the number of electrons in that atom differ. So the number of protons can't change. That's unique to each individual atom. But if it's gained or lost an electron, it's no longer going to have an equal balance of positive and negative charge. And as a result, that ion is going to be charged. It's either going to have a positive charge or it's going to have a negative charge. Um, if an atom loses an electron, it becomes an ion, which is a fully charged ion. So sodium has 11 protons and then it has 11 electrons. But it's not very stable because it has this one electron in the outer shell. It would rather lose that electron and just have the full second shell because that's going to make it more stable. So this electron can be lost, resulting in a sodium ion, which is positively charged because now we have still 11 protons in the nucleus, but now surrounding the nucleus there are only 10 electrons. So there's 11 positives and 10 negatives, which gives overall the sodium ion a plus one charge. Um, magnesium is an example of another atom that likes to lose electrons and become cations. Magnesium um, has 12 electrons, so it's going to lose the two in the outermost shell. And when it loses those two electrons, it's still going to have 12 protons, but it's going to have a positive 2 charge with only 10 electrons. The other option is that an atom can um, gain electrons. And when it gains electrons, it becomes a special ion called an anion. And it has a negative charge. So this is chlorine in its normal form. And in the third shell, chlorine only has 7 electrons. It would rather have 8 because that would make it more stable. Um, what can happen is that chlorine can gain an electron, and here's that extra electron. However, it still only has 17 protons in the nucleus, even though it has 18 electrons, so it has a negative one charge. There's one more negative versus the 17 positives, giving it a negative one charge. When we talk about ionic bonds, we also talk about electronegativity. And this is a measure of an atom's ability to pull electrons from another atom. So this has to do with um, how many electrons it has in the outer shell. And it also has to do with how many protons it has in the nucleus, because the electrons are very attractive to the positive protons. Um, in an ionic bond, it usually forms between a highly electronegative atom, which is going to pull an electron from another atom that is lower in electronegativity. So we're going to form a cation and an anion, and those two oppositely charged ions are going to be attracted to each other, forming an ionic bond. Here's an example um, with our sodium atom and our chlorine atom. So under normal circumstances, 
Sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons. It has one electron in its outer shell, and it's relatively unstable. It would like to lose that electron to have a full outer shell. Fluorine, on the other hand, has 17 protons and 17 electrons. It has seven electrons in its outer shell, and again, it's unstable. It would like to gain one electron to have a full outer shell. So chlorine is going to pull the electron from sodium, um, and that's going to create a full outer shell in sodium and a full outer shell in chlorine, creating two, amp two ions. Okay, so that's what we see here. The sodium ion, which has a positive charge, um, so it's a cation and the chlorine ion which has a negative charge so it's an anion. The positive and the negative ions are attracted to each other because opposite charges attract and that forms the ionic bond. Again, an ionic bond is when um, an electrons are gained or lost between two atoms and then they um, are attracted to each other due to the opposite charges resulting from the ion formation.